In this video, I'm going to do a Seahawks seven round mock draft using the Sports Skeeter mock draft simulator, which is the best one on the internet. But before we get started, I wanted to show you what the office is looking like now. A bit of Seahawks artwork in the background. We've got the Marshawn Lynch drawing grab from uh, Beastquake 2 in Arizona. Uh, on one side, on the other, we've got Cam Chancellor celebrating against the Panthers in the playoffs. And then in the middle, we've got Devin Witherspoon in the throwback uniform. That is a great piece of art by a very talented Seahawks fan called Tyler Shaw. Go and check out his work. Google Tyler Shaw. He has painted pictures of several Seahawks players. Really pleased to have that in the middle of the room here. It's a bit of free publicity for him. Love his works. Go and check it out online. Google his name, Tyler Shaw. Right, let's get on to this mock draft simulation. And I can warn you now, this is going to be very different to any of the other mock drafts that you see uh, featuring the Seahawks. So I'm using Sports Skeeter. It is the most athletically pleasing and I think the best mock draft simulator around. My plan is to, to try and get as many picks in rounds two, three, and four, because that's where I think the meat of this draft is going to be. There are players that I would stick and pick at number 16. One of them will be Chop Robinson, who went 15th overall. I think he's a top 10 player. I think he's a potential game wrecker. Love his, his get-off is so elite that I would potentially consider taking him at number 16. But he's gone. Taliesa Fuaga has gone at number 14 as well. Jared Verse has gone at 13. These are three players that I would consider at 16. They are all gone. So I'm going to trade down. Now, I've got three offers, but I just love this offer from the Lions. So to move up 13 picks, they'll give us a second and a third round pick. And all we have to do is give them our fifth round pick back. And the fifth, sixth, and seventh round is where things start to get light in this class. So I'm not even thinking about the other offers. I'm taking this offer from the Lions, and I am moving down to number 29. Now, I am very much open to moving down again here. I do not think the value in the first round is all that great and that the players that you get in this range are not going to be that much better than the players you can get in round two. Now, look, Troy Fatanu would be a good fit here given the, the coaching staff that have come to Seattle. I really like Braylon Trice. I really like Cooper Beebe. I think Tavondre Sweat's incredibly athletic for his size, but I worry about his weight. I've gone off Jackson Powers Johnson a little bit since reviewing his tape after the senior ball, which I initially thought he did very, very well, but I just kept noticing he doesn't shoot his hands quite as well enough. He's not quite as good in his angles. So I think he's a good player, but I'm not sure he's somebody that I would want to take in round one. Latu, again, I didn't think he had a great senior ball, and he has short arms as well, so he's not somebody that I'm going to take there. So I'm very much open to trading out again. Graham Barton would have been someone I would have considered at 29, but he's gone at 28. So I'm looking at this offer here from the Falcons. I don't really want stock next year. So let's see if we can bin off the second round the next year, get rid of the fourth round pick from here, and just see if we can get Atlanta's third to move down another 14 spots. Let's see, and we can. And I'm happy to do that. You know, get into the right kind of range where you want to make a pick. Okay, to move down two spots for a third next year. Not interested. Don't want to move 40 spots with the Broncos. So here we are at 43. Now, I think, that again, look, you can see the, the kind of players that are still here. You know, Powers Johnson, McKinley Jackson, Darius Robinson, Roger Rosengarten are not, I don't think they're any worse than the players that were available at 29. This is kind of what I'm talking about here. And they're not that far off what was available at 16. Now, it's interesting that Michael Penix Jr. has gone off the board at 42. I wasn't going to go with a quarterback this early anyway. Let's just have a look and see which quarterbacks are left. So that all of the top ones are gone at this point. But I'm not too disappointed about that because that's not the direction I wanted to go here. And by trading down a couple of times, we've now got 61, 73, and 74 to go with 76, 78, and 18. So we've got a lot of opportunities here to build the kind of team that we want. I've got the guys that I want to target, and I'm going to start trying to go after them now with the picks that we've acquired. The first one I'm going to take is Zach Zinter here. Now, Zach Zinter, the Michigan guard, for me, would have probably been the best interior offensive lineman before the injury that he picked up against Ohio State. By all accounts, all of the reports say that he's recovering very, very well from that broken leg. And I don't know if he's going to be back for the combine. I would be highly skeptical that he's going to do anything at the combine. Maybe he can get a workout before the draft. I think he's a top 50 player. I think he's somebody that you could bring in and could really solidify that offensive line. I think he could be a huge part of it for a long time. You know, he's someone that I think Steve Hutchinson will really like. I think he's obviously got the background with Jay Harbour, Mike McDonald, and they'll know all about him as well. 
I just think he's a terrific player. Not a great athlete, not going to blow up the combine if he could work out there. Just a really good, solid starting guard. And I'm going to take him here and start to build up those trenches in Seattle by taking Zach Zinzer. So we take him at 43, and I I just think that's a, a home run kind of pick for me. So we've already traded down a lot. We could potentially trade down again here for 132. I will consider that. Let's just have a look who is on the board. I mean, this is the kind of range where there are some defensive tackles that are really good. Obviously, I really like Peyton Wilson as well. But again, after the reviewing the senior bowl, his frame was just so wiry. He didn't look like a linebacker. He looked more like a specialist rusher than anything else, uh, which was a little bit frustrating because I really like the way that he plays. He has got a bit of an injury history as well. But this is the kind of range where I think you can really start to build up your defense. So I kind of I am sort of thinking defensive tackle here, but you know, I really like TJ Tampa. He is somebody that, you know, with these picks, I want to try and and come away with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to accept this trade to get a pick 132 off the Chiefs. We continue to sort of move around a little bit here. I'm not going to drop down another. You know, I think you can do too much trading down in these things. So here we are. Who have we got still on the board? Okay, I'm going to make a pick. I want to make sure that I get TJ Tampa, and I'll be really annoyed if somebody takes him before pick 73. So we've only got nine picks to go. So it's whether I want to risk it or not. Because the defensive tackle depth is still really good. Do you know what? I think I'm going to take it. And people will say, well, cornerback's not a need. But, you know, Reek Woolen had a bit of a disappointing sophomore year. We've got to try and get him back. I appreciate that. Michael Jackson doesn't have a long-term contract in Seattle. And what Devin Witherspoon's going to be role going to be with Mike McDonald? Is he going to be more of a slot, more of an aggressive slot, or attack-minded? I think TJ Tampa is such... I've only watched him this week. He is exactly the kind of defender I want on my team. He hammers people. He is a Seahawk. By the definition of what they have tried to redefine as a Seahawk over the last couple of years. I'm going to take him here at the end of round two. I don't care what people say about needs and stuff like that. I just want him on this team. So I'm going to take TJ Tampa here because he hammers people and that's what I want from this team. Okay, so it's not the biggest need, but the plan has worked because I was worried that someone would... Because cornerback's a premium position. There was a lot of depth at defensive tackle and now you can see, you know, Tyler Davis, Mackay Wingo, Ruka Roro is still there. You know, Jalen McMillan's not going to be available at this range. I don't think Roman Wilson is either, but... You know, when I look at this now, I'm going to take Ruka Roro because he's got long arms, very disruptive. The more I've watched of him, the more I've liked. I think that he's he's somebody who could really come into the rotation quite quickly and have an impact there. I, I just like a lot of what he does and the way that he plays. So I'm going to take Rook here from Clemson at number 73. And then we are back on the clock. I'm not moving down again with the Browns. So we have got Zach Zinter to really bolster that offensive line interior. We have got TJ Tampa, who I appreciate is not a big need for the Seahawks. But I just love the way that he plays. And you know, maybe you are going to need a cornerback if Woolen can't get back to his best, if Michael Jackson's not going to be a long-term fixture in this team. I have no problem at all with having as many defensive backs as possible who love to play run support and just smash people in the face. So we've got another one in TJ Tampa. And then Ruka Roro, I think, is a very talented player for the defensive line. So I really like the direction we're going here. And I just want to carry on sort of this momentum now. There are a couple of other defensive backs I want to make sure that I come away with. And I might save one of these picks for one of those players in particular. I want to see sort of what offensive line options we've got. There's, you know, there are still centers that we could take for depth and competition later on. I'm not sure that Brandon Coleman will still be here at that point in the draft. I don't think Theo Johnson will be. I, I could easily take Jalen Polk here and feel really happy about that. I just think he's too good to last to this point, but he's perhaps more likely to last to this point than McMillan and Roman Wilson. So I will certainly think about that. 
in terms of best player available. And also, the other player that I'm sort of thinking in this range is someone like Spencer Rattler. I know that they have him way, way down on the list. But when you're sort of getting into this third round range, and look, Rattler could go a lot earlier than this, or he could go round three, round four. It's distinctly possible. And I want to add a quarterback at some point. You know, I'd consider Michael Pratt as well. And maybe we just sort of wait and let the draft come to us in that regard, given that the big names have gone. So there's some interesting decisions to be made here. Linebacker is also a need. And when I'm sort of looking at these guys, there are players that I I like who are way down on the list, like Nathaniel Watson at Mississippi State is somebody that I would consider taking later on. The player that I'm going to take here is probably... Edron Cooper, because I just think from the speed and the hitting, I think he could be a good complement to Jordan Brooks. So I'm going to take Edron Cooper. Again, he kind of fits the style that the Seahawks are going for. He didn't blow me away when I was watching tape, but in the third round, you know, I think with these three players, Tampa, Aroro, and Cooper, they kind of fit the mentality of what you're going for. So I think we're doing a decent job sort of building up the defensive side of the ball here. So I'm quite happy with what we're doing. I mean, I love Jeremiah Trotter, but the more I watched him, I just thought, is he quick enough? You know, is he the kind of player that's going to be able to run up and smash people? And if you are signing, re-signing Jordan Brooks, you're probably looking for someone who's going to play on the outside a little bit more. And Andrew Cooper's better for that role than maybe in the middle. And I think Jeremiah Trotter's better in the middle. So there we go. That's where we are at the minute. Uh, we're back on the clock. Do you know what? I, As much as it's not a need, and I did this with TJ Tampa, I am going to take Jalen Polk here. I'm going to take Jalen Polk. And the reason I'm going to take Jalen Polk is because when I was visiting Washington's facility, I'm, I was talking about to people about, you know, who were the players that kind of stand out. Jalen Polk was just described as like, he is... He's a dog. You know, he's somebody who's going to get in there. He's going to compete. That He's got a you know, great profile, good physical traits, you know, and he's just going to give everything for the team. He, to me, feels very much like a Seahawk. And I know that you've got, obviously, DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, Jackson Smith and Jeeper, Jake Bobo. I know that you have those players already. But how much longer is Tyler Lockett going to carry on for? You know, I do buy into the idea that you're only as good as your third receiver. If Lockett's only got like one more year left in him, you know, I, I think Bobo's more of a wide receiver four than somebody who slots in as one of your top three. Whereas I think Polk could be a replacement for Ty Lockett. I'm not saying he's like Ty Lockett, but he's somebody who could sort of fit into your receiver rotation and do, do a great job for you. And he sort of fits that attitude. So I think it's a value pick. And, you know, you're not just filling needs, you're trying to add talent as well. And when I look at that group of players that we've got so far, I think that is. For me, that's sort of like an A-plus group of guys at the minute. So what have we got now? We've got 78, we've got 118, and we've got 132. There is one player that I really want to make sure that I don't come out without, and that is Malik Mustafa. I think he is Buda Baker. Now, he may not be Buda Baker. I appreciate that. But when I watch him on tape, I just keep thinking, you remind me so much of Buda Baker. So I don't want to risk waiting to round four. I've given him a second round grade. I think he can do everything on the back end. I think you can move him around the different safety spots. I want him on this team. And by the way, he hammers people. He's fast and he hammers people. So I want Malik Mustafa on the team. So again, it's another player that I am really happy that we have within this group. And I'm looking at this draft class now and we've got a guard that I can help that can help solidify the interior. We've got a physical cornerback. We've got really good, I think, immediate contributor at defensive tackle in the rotation. Edron Cooper to come in and fill one of the holes at linebacker. Jalen Polk is just going to give everything at receiver and could be a long-term replacement for Tyler Lockett. And then Malik Mustafa, you're going to have to get some youth and some physicality. At safety, I think he's you know, a really good option there. Um, so we've got 118 and 132 here with these two picks. And I kind of know what direction I want to go in. So 
We are in round four. And again, I appreciate that there is a chance that Spencer Rattler is going to go a lot earlier than this, but I want to take a quarterback. And if the if he was off the board, and I think he is going to be off the board at this point, then I'd probably look in, at, at Michael Pratt. But he is still here. There is a chance that some teams are going to be put off by the whole Oklahoma experience. He isn't the biggest guy. And th I think there could be a possibility that he, he falls a little bit. It, it could go either way with a lot of these guys. Michael Penix and Bo Nix are in the same kind of boat, really. They could go very, very early, and they could last a bit longer than people think. If Rattler lasts here, I'm taking him. And, there, and there's your sort of your, your quarterback to come in and help help build around. Now, I would have considered this offer to get another pick, but there's a player that I really, really want who is playing safety and I don't want to miss out from getting them. And I know we've already drafted one safety, but I just, again, it's another guy like TJ Tampa that I watched this week and I just thought I want him on the Seahawks. Kitan Oladapo, the safety from Oregon State. Big, fast, physical, runs up and hits you. Not a slouch in coverage though. If they're going to move on from Quandre Diggs and Jamal Adams, they're going to need some youth at safety. You know, Julian Love's going to be here. And let's not forget, this is a, a Ravens-inspired defense that I'm led to believe run a, a lot of three safety stuff. So, you know, you are going to need some depth and competition there. And I think if you get Malik Mustafa and Kitan Oladapo to go with Julian Love, who lets, he's not on a long-term contract in Seattle, I think you're in really good shape there. And I just think there's a, there's a theme running throughout this seven-round mock draft, which is physicality, intensity, hitting, toughness, and no little talent as well. So there we go. We've got one more pick in this draft. Now, the one thing I want, you know, I do think there's a decent chance that um, they're going to potentially run with Oliver Teamate, who is obviously Michigan, and there's background there with at least Jay Harbour, uh, that they run with him at center especially if they draft Zach Zinter, who's played alongside Oliver Timi, that that could be a connection that really works on the interior. I do think they want some competition at centre, though. Now, if I had a couple of picks in this range, and look, we've already done a decent job building up some picks, what I would love to do is get some competition at, at, at centre for Oliver Timi. And I'd also then like to go and get Nathaniel Watson, the linebacker from Mississippi State, who has a whole bunch of sacks. He's very aggressive. I think they do need a bit more depth at linebacker. They can't just I mean, kind of get him by that position for a while. And I'd love to see Nathaniel Watson in that aggressive, physical sort of attack-minded defense that the Seahawks have now. That if I had another pick here, I would take him. But because I want to go and get the competition at guard, and center, I want to go, oh, do you know what? The guy that I was going to take, though, I think has gone, which is really, really frustrating because I kind of got through this entire thing without worrying about that. And, I th and now I'm going to slip up right at the end. Let me go and see if I can find him. I want the guy, Dylan McMahon from NC State, and the Packers have taken him. So can't do that. Scrap that plan. One option would be, you know, looking at who's left. I mean, Dominic Pooney going to be long gone by this point. You know, one... Thing we could see them do. Where's he gone? His monk from Duke would be an option. I don't know where they're ranking him here. I can't find him anymore. But he, I think he, I'm sure I saw his name pop up a minute ago. But seeing as uh, Dylan McMahon is gone, I'll just go back to plan, uh, plan B anyway and take Nathaniel Watson there. So there we go. That's the draft. Kind of went a bit wrong at the end. But, you know, Resign the center, I don't care. You know, go and get a, a cent, the center. I know a lot of people sort of get angry when you sort of think about, you know, dismissing the center position, but, you know, they, <laughs> I think they're going to like Oliver Timi. And they drafted him last year and spoke very highly of him. And, you know, he's had a year's grace now. So there we go. It's not the perfect, I'm not suggesting for a second, it is a perfect mock draft, but you have addressed the offensive line. I'd like to see them go and sign a veteran offensive lineman as well and really go for it in free agency, like Jonah Williams, who could play guard, 
and could play right tackle depending on a Lucas's health. I think that would secure against both things. You know, cut the two safeties, Diggs and Adams, go and get Leonard Williams, and then go and transfer some of the money to someone like Jonah Williams as well. And I think you could feel pretty good about that. And then you're sort of filling out the depth of your team. So TJ Tamper at cornerback. Ruka Roro at, uh, easy for me to say, uh, defensive tackle. You know, more depth up front there. Because Jaron Reed's not going to be able to go on forever and you just need a bit more competition. Edron Cooper at linebacker to play next to Jordan Brooks. Jalen Polk, you know, could, could chip in as a rookie, but, you know, down the line could be a longer term Tyler Lockett replacement to make sure you've got three really quick, dynamic receivers on this roster. Got a connection with the staff as well. Malik Mustafa, I just love. Buda Baker, clone. Spencer Rattler in round four. I, I He's an immensely talented player. And I think if you can get him in this range and throw him into the competition, then why not? I think it's absolutely great value. Kitten Oladapo, bigger safety. Nice compliment to Malik Mustafa and to Julian Love. And then Nathaniel Watson, who's a sack machine at linebacker, who can be very versatile and play a number of different roles for you. So I think that's the kind of draft class that would, you know, it's it's a meat and potatoes draft class. But that's kind of what the Seahawks need, isn't it? And although, you know, some of the bigger names that people are talking about are not included here, I think you are better for coming out with a draft like this. So anyway, that's what I've gone with. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe so you don't miss any future videos, seahawksdraftblog.com for more analysis. Until next time, bye for now.